Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, what we are going to do, we are going to stay on with the social shaping of technology vis-a-vis -vis in relation to the technological shaping of society. I mean, when we discuss social shaping of technology, we, we are, we are dis discussing social shaping of technology in contradistinction with technological shaping of society. In this context, we have discussed many things, political control of technological systems, technology as knowledge, uh, uh, social construction of technological systems, actor network theory and from here onward, we are going to discuss how technology is also shaped by gender. In this context, we are going to discuss the relationship between feminism and technology or how do feminists bring about a critique to technology. Okay? Technology is, I mean, when, when I say feminists critique to technology, I mean technology as a socio-technical arrangement okay? of certain political order, social order, military order, uh, ethical order, legal order and so on. Okay? In this context, Cynthia Cockburn, I mean in his, in her, in her uh, article, uh, caught in the wheels, which represents a pivotal point in the growing engagement between feminism and technology. Cogborn went beyond concerns for equal opportunities. I mean, when I say equal opportunities, I mean, when she uh, mentioned, when Cogborn mentioned equal opportunities, uh, it is not simply equal opportunities uh, between two genders, but, but which goes beyond equal opportunities, uh, I mean greater representation of women in the traditionally male professions of science and engineering to ask two further questions. Number one is that is technology itself shaped by gender? Number two or is gender shaped by technology? When I, when, when Cogborn posed this question, uh, is technology itself shaped by gender? Okay. I mean, whether or, or is gender shaped by technology, okay. what is the cause and what is the effect? What is the uh, antecedent and what is the consequent? What is uh, the explicandum and what is the explicand? I mean, what is the cause and what is the effect? Whether gender is the cause and technology is the effect or technology is the cause and, and uh, gender is the effect. Let us see. When, when, when Cogburn posed this question, first question is technology itself shaped by gender, Cogburn's answer to the first question that is each technology shaped by, it's, uh, each technology itself shaped by gender, okay? it, the answer to that question is that industrial, commercial, um, military technologies are masculine in a very historical and material sense. In part, this gendering, gendering role okay, arises because artifacts and forms of knowledge associated with women are often simply not regarded as technology. Okay. Even, even uh, Ruth Kwan, I mean uh, Ruth Squarch Kwan, for example, noted in 1979 there, I mean uh, the, the exclusion of women from traditional history of technology. Okay. Let me quote Cohen here. She mentions that the indices to the standard histories of technology do not contain a single reference, for example, to such 
a significant cultural artifact as the baby bottle. Here is a simple implement which has transformed a fundamental human experience for vast numbers of uh, infants and mothers and been one of those one of the more controversial exports of western technology to underdeveloped countries yet it finds no place in our history of technology. Cohen wrote in 1979. Okay? Uh, uh, we will we'll come to the second, second point a little while later. I mean, we one must explore the gendering of technology in several other ways. Here, what is more immediately relevant and is arguably Cockburn's distinctive contribution to the debate around uh, uh, gender and technology okay? is, her, uh, is her answer to the second question that is, is gender set by technology? Technology, Cockburn argues, is one of the formative processes of men, men not women, okay? historically, materially. Okay? The, the appropriation of technology by men and the exclusion of women from many of the domains deemed technical are processes that leave their mark in the very design of tasks and of messages. I, I mean, I mean uh, they, are, they are also part of the processes by which in our society gender is constituted. Okay? Uh, different childhood socialization, different role models, different forms of schooling, okay? I mean childhood socialization, uh, different role models. Uh, 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 different forms of schooling, uh, gender segregation and occupations, different domestic responsibilities and sometimes plain historical processes of expulsion okay, as after the first and second world wars have all contributed to what Cockburn describes uh, as the construction of men as strong, manually able and technologically endowed and women as physically and technically incompetent okay this this is this 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 is how uh, gendering of technology has been done historically and materially okay if if gender and technology are mutually constitutive okay if 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 a feminist construal of technology okay uh, i mean if if technology and gender Okay, are mutually constitutive, so are ethnicity and technology. Though this is a topic that has been much less thoroughly explored in recent literature. How a particular ethnic group conceives of technology, perceives technology. The mutual, uh, the mutual constitution is most evident in relation to that commonplace marker of ethnicity. Technology has been shaped by ethnicity in, a, in the sense that in that uh, conventional valuations of skin colors have been the benchmark in the development of photographic and film technologies. Okay? Uh, I mean you can, you can look at uh, many Hollywood movies where you will find if a film has been uh, based on uh, US or UK, okay, you will find the, the names of villains. Okay? They are mostly from the erstwhile Soviet Union. Okay? This is how uh, 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 film industry, photographic industries, film technologies, they, are, they, are, uh, uh, they have uh, exhibited the spirit of racism. Um, in this sense, firstly, first, I mean, uh, I mean uh, number one, I mean, it, I mean the, the relationship between ethnicity and technology uh, can be established on two points. Okay? First, technology has been shaped by ethnicity in that conventional valuations of skin colors have been the benchmark in the development of photographic and film technologies. These typically are fine tuned so that they provide pleasing renditions of white faces sometimes to the detriment of the reproduction of other skin colors, colorations. That is why you will find uh, in Hollywood as well as in some Bollywood movies that uh, especially the villains are of black color. Okay? 
the skin color uh, determines who is going to be the villain uh, uh, so far as the relationship is of between ethnicity and technology or resigement technology uh, is concerned. Okay. It is extremely important precisely because the way we look at uh, uh, childhood socialization, I mean um, uh, the background, uh, different role models, different forms of schooling, uh, uh, segregation of occupations, uh, uh, different uh, responsibilities, um, they, are, they are historically conditioned. Okay. They must be examined in a more historical and material sense. Okay. In this sense, uh, I mean that is why uh, what, what we first, first point is uh, first point has to be uh, examined uh, in detail that how technology has been shaped by ethnicity in that conventional valuations of skin colors have been the benchmark in the development of photographic and film technologies. Okay. These typically are fine tuned so that they provide pleasing renditions of white faces sometimes to the detriment of the reproduction of other skin color issues. And secondly, technology has helped constitute ethnicity in that conventional hierarchies of desirability have been reinforced by the reproduction of white faces as pleasing flesh stones rather than as unpleasantly beefy. Okay? Uh, I mean, uh, if you, if you, uh, 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 if we can, we can uh, uh, look at this. I mean, technology, the way technology has helped constitute ethnicity in that conventional hierarchies of desirability have been reinforced by the reproduction of white faces as pleasing flesh tones, rather than as often uh, uh, happened with. Uh, untuned photographic technologies as unpleasantly beefy. Okay. From, from here onward, what we are going to do? We are going to look at uh, in specific terms okay, uh, other ways to look at the social shaping of technology. Okay. We are in, in this section we are trying to, to provide as many examples as possible okay, to establish uh, how technology is socially, economically, politically, culturally, uh, ethically, legally, institutionally, ideologically shaped. Okay. Technology is not an autonomous activity, it is not independent, okay. it, de it does not develop on its own rather it uh, the the development the, the emergence and development of a particular technology is very much contingent upon the the way our economic culture and polity are uh, are designed okay that's why in if you recall uh, the initial lectures that we discussed that uh, a technology is not neutral the neutrality of a particular technology depends on the way it is designed and controlled okay let us let us see how Donna Haraway, she is a she is an uh, she is an eminent uh, STS scholar. Um, uh, the way uh, the, the we are going to discuss the way she has unfurled uh, the different dimensions within uh, this, within the purview of social setting of technology. I mean, if you look at all language including mathematics is figurative that is made of tropes constituted by uh, bumps that make us sure from literal mindness mindedness literal mindedness what do we, what do we mean by tropes i mean non literal uses of language such as metaphor how we attempts to emphasize figuration to make explicit and inescapable the topic quality, the tropic, tropic quality 
uh, of all material semiotic processes especially in techno science. Okay. What is that semiotic process then? When I say techno science I mean we are trying to uh, we are trying to go beyond the distinction between science and technology we are trying to look at technology and science on common parlance. I mean we are not trying to make a distinction between uh, science and technology because what is technology uh, uh, becomes science tomorrow uh, what is technology today become uh, will become science tomorrow and what is science today uh, may become technology tomorrow. I mean this is the this is the dialectical relationship between science and technology that is why we are using a techno science. What is that semiotic process? A semiotic process is loosely one in which meaning is created. Haraway used the term techno science in preference to science and technology because he feels the two have become inseparable. We cannot make a distinction between science and technology. For example, think of a small set of objects into which lives and worlds are built, chip, maybe chip, gene, seed, fetus, database, bomb, race, brain, uh, ecosystem and many, many other things. Okay. This, this, this kind of list is made up of imploded atoms or dense nodes that explode into entire worlds of practice. The chip, seed or gene is simultaneously literal as well as figurative. We inhabit and are inhabited by such figures that map universes of knowledge, practice and power. The globalization of the world of planet earth is a semiotic material production of some forms of life rather than others. Okay? Techno science is the story of such such globalized world, such gl the such process of globalization. It is the travelogue of distributed uh, uh, heterogeneous linked socio technical calculations uh, that craft the world as a net called the global. Okay. Herein lies the significance of a concept called cyborg or a cybernetic organism. Okay. When we look at before before getting into information society, uh, 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 I mean what are the issues uh, uh, involved in information society, what are the illusions that information society brings in today. Before getting into this it is important to look at cyborg uh, a cybernetic organism uh, propounded by uh, Donna Haraway. I mean cyborg refers to a fusion of the organic and the technical life forms that inhabit the the recently congealed planet earth the whole earth of eco activists uh, and green commodity catalogs gested gestated in a historically specific techno scientific bomb okay we can we can give numerous examples uh, i mean uh, uh, for for example okay i mean uh, we'll come to this point how uh, the cyborg is uh, figure both material and uh, fantastic both real and imaginary that explore the implications for life in the context of techno science okay let us let us give uh, let us have some examples the apparatuses of the 20th century military conflicts embedded in repeated world wars decades of cold war nuclear weapons even today even today and their institutional matrix in strategic planning endless scenario production and simulations in think tanks such as rand the the uh, the immune system like networking strategies for post colonial global control inscribed in low intensity conflict doctrines and post cold war simultaneous multiple war fighting strategies depending on rapid massive deployment, concentrated control of information and communications and high intensity sub nuclear precision weapons. The, 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 the apparatuses of hyper capitalist market traffic, I mean in, in today's in today's terminology it is a it is a capitalist market that we see 
uh, in the international area. Okay? Uh, the apprentices of hyper capitalist market traffic and flexible accumulation strategies all relying on stunning speeds and powers of manipulation of scale, especially miniaturization which characterize the paradigmatic high technology transnational corporations. Okay? The, app, the apparatuses of production in that techno scientific uh, uh, planetary habitat space uh, called the ecosystem with its constitutive birth banks in resource management practices in such institutions as national fisheries um, in the 1920s and 1930s in post second world war theoretical fascination with all things cybernetic in the atomic energy commission AEC mediated uh, uh, research projects in the 1950s in the US uh, for tracing radio stops um, uh, uh, radio show tops uh, uh, through food chains in the uh, Pacific Ocean in the 1970s global modeling practices indebted to the club of Rome and to scientific and, and to international projects such as the uh, United Nations educational scientific and cultural organizations I mean UNESCO as uh, man and the biosphere program and in the early salvos of widespread green war as a dominant uh, new world order security concern with its uh, diplomatic forms played out in 1992 at the earth summit in Rio de Janeiro. I mean, if we if we look at the development of capitalism uh, and and subsequently um, capitalism that has given rise to certain types of technology, capitalism has not given rise to handloom technology. For example, capitalism has given rise to rather power loom technology, even more sophisticated technologies to produce cotton. Or silk, I mean, I mean cloth, okay. And then, then we see the responses, the critical responses to uh, to such largely state-funded, uh, state-sponsored uh, uh, capitalist technologies, okay. The apparatuses of production of globalized extraterrestrial everyday consciousness in the planetary pandemic of multi site, multimedia, multi species, multicultural, cyborgian uh, entertainment events such as uh, uh, I mean uh, many Star Trek uh, and so on and their proliferating uh, sequel in the daily information stream embedded in transnational US dominated um, broad spectrum media conglomerate, conglomerates uh, such as those forced by the, the, the mergers of Time Warner with CNN and the Disney Universe with Capital uh, Cities, owner of CBS and so on. Okay. The, the offspring, the, the offspring, the offspring of these techno scientific wombs are cyborgs, imploded germinal entities, tensely packed condensations of worlds sucked into being uh, from the force of the implosion uh, uh, of the natural and the artificial nature and culture, subject and object, machine and um, uh, organic body, money and lives, narratives and reality and so on. That is why the cyborg is figure both material and fantastic, both real and imaginary. Uh, that explore the implications for life in the context of techno science. So, so what kinds of kin are called in the proprietary forms of life in these days near the uh, I mean uh, in, in these days I mean in 2017 in the 21st century. Okay. How do we uh, who innovate such stories make psychic and commercial investments in forms of life where the lines among human, machine and organic nature are, are highly permeable and eminently revisable. How useful is my abiding suspicion that uh, biology, the historically specific congealed 
embodiments in the world as well as the techno scientific discourse positing such bodies is an accumulation strategy. The point is less disrepute, uh, disreputable uh, uh, if if uh, if uh, had had uh, uh, had Haraway uh, written that by technology both the discourse and the body constituted as bio as a biotechnics is an accumulation strategy, but much of what is accumulated is more strange than capital, more kind than alien, more alluring than gold. The the liberatory the liberatory the the uh, the potential of science and technology for liberation the liberatory uh, 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 potential of science and technology, I mean, uh, when we when we look at it is the great power of science and technology to create new meanings and new entities to make new worlds. Okay, in what gets politely called modernity. I mean, when we create new meanings, new entities, new worlds, we tend to arrive at a, uh, we tend to uh, look at a modernist construal of meanings, modernist construal of entities, modernist construal of these worlds. In what gets politely called modern modernity and its afterlife or half life accelerated production of natural knowledge pervasively structures commerce, industry, healing, community, war, sex, literacy, entertainment and worship. The world building alliances of humans and non-humans in techno science shape subjects and objects, subjectivity and objectivity, action and passion, inside and outside in ways that enfeeble other modes of speaking about science and technology. In short, in brief, in a nutshell, techno science is about worldly materialized signifying and significant power and and uh, many things can come i mean the cyborg uh, the way haraway uh, tried to look at uh, uh, cyborg i mean the cyborg is a cybernetic organism a fusion of the the organic and the technical forged in particular historical cultural practices. Cyborgs are not about the machine and the human as if such things and subjects universally existed. Instead, cyborgs are about uh, cyborgs are about specific historical machines and people in interaction that often turns out to be uh, painfully counterintuitive for the analyst of techno science. The term cyborg was coined by Manfred, uh, uh, Manfred uh, uh, Kleins and Nathan Klein to refer to the enhanced man who could survive in extraterrestrial environments. They imagined the cyborgian uh, uh, man machine hybrid would be needed in the next great techno humanist challenge that is the, the, the space flight. A designer of uh, uh, physiological instrumentation and electronic data processing systems Kleins was the chief research scientist in the dynamic simulation laboratory at, at Rockland State Hospital in New York. Okay. Klein that way was, was, was the director of research and, uh, at Rockland State, he was a Klein was a uh, clinical psychiatrist and, and the way they, they looked at this, one of their first cyborgs was a standard white laboratory rat implant, sorry, implanted with an osmotic pump designed to inject chemicals continuously, exchanging knowing figures with their uh, primate keen, okay, rondents will reappear in this uh, uh, at every turn, beginning with the rats who stored away on the mast ships of uh, Europe's age of exploration, uh, uh, rodents have gone fast into the unexplored regions in the great travel narratives of western techno science. Many I uh, like in the uh, science fictional wormhole in, in an episode in the uh, television soap Deep Space Nine, the laboratory continues to suck us into uncharted regions of technical, cultural and political space. 
passing through the wormhole of techno science the field mice emerge as the uh, as the finely tailored laboratory rodents model systems animate tools research material self acting organic technical hybrids okay uh, through whose eyes uh, darway uh, uh, dona haraway uh, uh, wrote this uh, uh, wrote this this uh, wrote essays on cyborg the such 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 modernist uh, perspective on new meanings modernist perspectives on uh, new entities modernist perspectives on new worlds okay what Dar uh, dona haraway uh, calls this this field site the 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 cultural the culture and practice of techno science okay culture and practice of techno science while 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 critical of many aspects of the way things happen such as the wholesale extending of private property to patenting life forms haraway warns against any purist re rejection of the unnatural hybrid entities produced by biotechnology for example the introduction of a gene from flounders into tomatoes which live in cold seas it enables the tomato to produce a protein that uh, that slows freezing right okay the 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 a transgenic organism contains genes transplanted from one strain or species or even across taxonomic kingdoms for example from fish to tomatoes uh, or fireflies to tobacco bacteria to humans or vice versa or to another transgenic transgenic uh, border crossing signifies serious challenges to the sanctity of of life for many members of western cultures which historically have been obsessed with racial purity okay which is which is unscientific in fact okay which historically have been obsessed with uh, which oh, which historically have have been obsessed with uh, racial purity uh, categories uh, uh, authorized by nature and the well defined self the distinction between nature and culture in western societies has been a sacred one it has been at the heart of the great narratives of salvation history and their genetic transmutation into sagas of secular progress what seems to be at stake in this culture's stories of the human place in nature human place in nature that is genesis and its endless repetitions and western intellectuals perhaps especially natural scientists and philosophers have historically been particularly likely to take their cultural stories for universal realities often often the kind of efforts to develop a politics of technology are seen as anti technology as an attempt to impose upon technology rigid negative political controls the prevalence of that conception is sometimes misunderstood as an attack on science and technology okay in this in this context it is a mistake to forget that anxiety over the pollution of lineages is at the origin of racist discourse in european cultures as well as at the heart of uh, uh, linked gender and sexual anxiety the discourses of transgression get all mixed up in the body of nature transgressive border crossing pollutes lineages in a transgenic organism's case the lineage of nature itself transforming nature into its binary opposite culture the line between the acts agents and products of divine creation and human engineering has given in the uh, sacred secular border zones and of molecular genetics and biotechnology the revolutionary continuities between natural kinds insaturated by the theory of biological evolution seem flaccid uh, compared to the rigorous couplings across uh, taxonomic kingdoms not to mention nations and companies produced daily in the genetic laboratory what what appears here is it what is the again what is the cause and what is the effect like uh, we uh, haraway started with this what is the cause and what is the effect gender or technology okay haraway tried to look at a dialectical relationship between gender and technology okay and this dialectical relationship can be established in a more historical and material sense now what is the cause and what is the effect nature or culture one may say that uh, even our culture is a part of nature 
somebody may somebody as a counter argument somebody may say that no the way we understand the relationship between nature and culture it is culturally amplified it is culturally conditioned okay we must try to look at we must try to examine the the dialectical relationship between nature and culture okay one can one just cannot say that no culture is prior or nature is prior or something. it is the way we try to conceptualize nature or culture okay it is they are very context specific okay when haraway pointed out that often efforts to develop a politics of technology are seen as anti technology as an attempt to impose upon technology rigid negative uh, political controls the prevalence of that misconception is sometimes misunderstood as an attack on science and technology in this context haraway is sharply critical of those who reject technology in favor of a return to a mythical natural state and see argues instead for an embracing of the positive potential of science and technology okay here we are we are trying to bring about a critique to technology doesn't imply that we want to go back to the theological stage or metaphysical stage when we started uh, this course uh, we are, we also started that uh, there are three stages through which um, science has made progress we have come to a point there are three laws of stages in the development of society namely theological stage or uh, theological stage secondly metaphysical stage and thirdly positivistic or scientific stage when we when we and theological stage is based on supernatural forces i mean social change or the changes in economic culture and polity uh, are ba are based on changes in supernatural phenomena okay whereas metaphysical stage suggests that no this is only that is the changes which occur in economic culture and polity they are naturally medi mediated okay and positivism or positivistic stage or scientific stage they questioned mm. uh, even the existence of uh, god the the they questioned the existence of religion they questioned uh, theological stage metaphysical stage and so on okay i mean positivism also has to be looked at uh, in the context of uh, industrial revolution critical thinking uh, uh reasoning capacity of the uh, of the individuals um, as well as institutions okay that's why when we try to bring about a critique to technology we are not trying to go back to uh, theological or metaphysical stage but we are trying to understand how a particular technology is socially economically and politically culturally shaped okay by by interrogating the hitherto existing forms and content of technology okay in in opposing the production of transgenic organisms especially opposing their patenting and other forms of private commercial exploitation committed activists appeal to notions such as the integrity of natural, natural kinds and the natural teleology you know, or self defining purpose of all forms of life or all life forms from this perspective to mix and match genes as if organisms were legitimate raw material for redesign is to violate natural integrity at its vital core transferring genes between species uh, transgresses natural barriers compromising species integrity this the this this, this uh, the activists and others also emphasize many other arguments for opposition to various biotechnological practices in the new world order the objections include increasing capital concentration and the monopolization of the means of life reproduction and labor appropriation of the commons of biological inheritance as the private uh, preserve of corporations the global depending of inequality by region nation race gender and class erosion of indigenous people self determination and uh, sovereignty in regions designated as biodiverse while indigenous lands and bodies become the object of intense gene prospecting and proprietary development inadequately assessed 
and potentially dire environmental health consequences misplaced uh, uh, misplaced priorities for uh, uh, techno scientific investment funds propagation of distorted and simplistic scientific explanations such as genetic determinism intensified cruelty to uh, and domination of over animals uh, depletion of biodiversity and the undermining of established practices of human and non-human life culture and production without engaging those most affected in democratic decision making and and they they are, they are valid and these 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 objections these these interrogations are are legitimate they are valid okay and one must take these objections very seriously the state also must take these objections interrogations very seriously okay and all of them are taken up if uh, but 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 must be taken up very seriously okay but but what haraway tried to point out that haraway doesn't think simply naming the concerns either uh, decides the direction of effects or describes the cross cultural polyphony through which scientific practice is constituted worldwide effects and practices are multi layered and context specific and it is too easy for all parties to fall into dogma where fundamental cultural and material values are both not shared and at stake what must not be lost from sight in all of this complexity however is that power profit and bodily arrangements are at the heart of biotechnology as a global practice the stakes are immense just as they are in nuclear culture okay that's why uh, but 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 by 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 bringing about a rejection to the hitherto existing forms and content of technology in uh, 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 doesn't imply that one must go back to a mythical natural state and uh, perhaps for this reason perhaps for this reason donna haraway uh, argues instead for an embracing of the positive potential of science and technology for see she revels in the very difficulty of predicting what technology's effects will be okay the the lively unfixed and unfixing practices of science and technology uh, produce surprises which just might be good ones how it focuses on the western theme of purity of type natural process purposes and transgression of sacred boundaries the history and current politics of racial and immigration discourses in europe and the united states ought to set off acute anxiety in the presence of these supposedly high ethical and ontological themes okay. if you if you slightly recall what is ethics ethics is, is this study of nature of conduct what is ontology i mean we we discussed uh, in, in the initial lectures the ontological questions ontology what is being what is existing okay uh, that's why in the in the appeal i mean i mean it is important to hear in the biotechnology debates the unintended tones of fear for the alien and suspicion of the mixed mixed variety the, the in the appeal to intrinsic natures how it tried to look at a mystification of kind and purity akin to the doctrines of white racial uh, hegemony and us national integrity and purpose that to permeate north american culture and history how we knew that this appeal to sustain other organisms inviolable intrinsic natures uh, is intended to affirm their difference from humanity and their claim on lives lived on their terms and not man's the appeal aims to limit turning all the world uh, into a source for human appropriation but it is a problematic argument resting on unkin unconvincing biology history is erased for other organisms as well as for humans in the doctrine of types and intrinsic purposes and a kind of timeless stasis in nature is piously narrated if we look at this then the ancient cobbled together mixed of history of living beings okay 
whose long tradition of genetic exchange will be the envy of industry for a long time to come gets short shift uh, more fundamentally in the midst of a, a nation where race is everywhere reproduced and reinforced everywhere unspeakable and euphemized okay and everywhere deferred and treated obliquely as in talk of drug wars un uh, urban underclasses diversity illegal aliens wilderness preservation terrorist viruses immune defenses against invaders and crack babies i cannot hear discussion i mean i mean what what um, what uh, haraway tried to try to interrogate okay that uh, uh, that uh, she was uh, i mean uh, uh, haraway tried to uh, tried to not to look at uh, disharmonious crosses among uh, um, or, or try uh, try to avoid uh, disharmonious uh, crosses among organic beings uh, and of implanted alien genes without hearing a racially inflected and xenophobic symphony located in the belly of the monster haraway found the discourses of natural harmony the non alien and purity unsalvageable for understanding our genealogy of the new world order the way the way uh, uh, haraway tried to look at this uh, the difficulty of predicting uh, technology's effects i mean in turn uh, i mean emotionally intellectually morally and politically uh, 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 to to the natural and the pure perhaps perhaps for for uh, haraway uh, it is perverse to hear the dangers of racism in the opposition of genetic engineering and especially transgenics at just the moment when national and international coalitions of indigenous consumer feminist environmental and development non governmental organizations i mean ngos civil society organizations have formed to oppose patenting commercialization um, and expropriation of human animal and plant genetic materials although the moral scientific and economic issues are far from simple haraway opposed the patenting of animals uh, uh, human genes and much plant genetic material okay haraway opposed patenting it is important okay when we patent uh, what kind of things we are going to patent if we are going to patent medicine then it will be beyond the accessibility of uh, many 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 sections of the population in the world if we patent seed then our food system will be at stake okay that's why haraway as a humanitarian okay uh, uh, say opposed patenting of animals human genes and much plant genetic material genes for profit are not equal to science itself or to economic health genetic sciences and politics are at the heart of critical struggles for equality democracy and sustainable life the global commodification of genetic resources is a political and scientific emergency and indigenous people are among the key actors in biopolitics just as they have had to be in nuclear culture but the actors in biopolitics just as they have had to be uh, i mean but 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 i mean but the tendency by the uh, what what uh, haraway uh, in, in an interesting manner uh, uh, reflected on the political left okay um, uh, her area of political spectrum okay to to collapse molecular genetics biotechnology profit and exploitation into one undifferentiated mass is at least as much of a mistake as the mirror image reduction by the right of biological or informational complexity to the gene and its avatars or incarnations including the doll okay her always uh, interesting reflection on this objects i mean uh, uh, many many things can come up now i mean uh, uh totipotent stem cells for example are those cells in an organism that retain the capacity to differentiate into any kind of cell 
stem cells can regenerate the whole array of cell types possible for that life form. Stem cells are the nodes in which the potential of entire worlds is concentrated. Objects like the fetus, chip, computer, gene, race, ecosystem, brain, database and bomb are stem cells of the techno scientific body. Okay? Each of these curious objects, I mean may be fetus, may be chip, may be gene, may be computer, may be ecosystem, race, brain, whatever bomb, data uh, base, whatever you say, it, they are recent, const I mean each of these curious objects uh, is a recent construct or uh, material semiotic object of knowledge forced by heterogeneous practices in the fur uh, furnaces um, of techno science to be a, a construct uh, does not mean to be unreal or made up. When we say uh, technology is a constructed one, it does not imply that it is unreal or made up. It, in fact, it is quite the opposite. It is real, it is ontological. Okay? Uh, out of each of these nodes or stem cells, sticky threads lead to every nook and cranny of the world. Which threads to follow is an analytical, imaginative, physical and political choice. Okay? Haraway was committed, Haraway is committed to showing how, how each of these stem cells is a knot of, knot of K N O T, knot of knowledge making practices, industry and commerce, popular culture, social struggles psychoanalytic formations, bodily histories, human and non-human actions, local and global flows, inherited narratives, new stories, syncretic, technical, cultural processes and many more. For example, a seed contains inside its coat the history of practices such as collecting, breeding, marketing, taxon uh, taxonomizing patenting, biochemically analyzing, advertising, eating, cultivating, harvesting, celebrating and starving. Okay? I mean these are, these may be, these are the functions of a seed. A seed produced in the biotechnological institutions now spread around the world contains the specifications for labor systems, planting calendars, Waste control procedures, marketing, land holding and beliefs about hunger and well being. Similarly, a database is a technical and utopic object that structures future accessibility. Why we create database? So that in future we can depend on them. Okay? A database is an ideal place where all elements are equal in the grid and everyone can access all of them in the future also. The database is, contain, is a condensed site for contestations over techno scientific versions of democracy and freedom. This is very important. If democracy and freedom will be removed from the purview of the database, then the database loses its meaning. Both the genome and the brain are databases literally built in the experimental multidisciplinary documentary proprietary information management and other practices of the human genome project and the human uh, brain mapping project. What in a nutshell in, in the context of cyborg, cyborg organisms and so on, what Haraway tried to examine? Let us sum up. Okay? Haraway tried to work out at least some of the knots that knots again I repeat K N O T S. Okay. How we attempted to work out at least some of the knots that constitute genes, databases, chips, computers, seeds, cyborgs, races, fetuses, and so on, or bombs. You may say. Okay. Her accounts are clearly not exhaustive, as she has admitted nor are they rigorously causal, but they are intended to be more than merely suggestive about the connecting, connective tissues, lubricants, codes and actors in the worlds we must care about. And such articulations about stem cells and within each of them are links that matter in what gets affectionately called the real world. 
how do techno scientific stem cells link up with each other in expected and unexpected ways and differentiate into entire worlds and ways of life. It is fantastic, it is interesting to note this. Okay. How do we, I mean how do techno scientific stem cells link up with each other in expected as well as unexpected ways and differentiate into entire worlds and ways of life. How do the differently situated human and non-human actors and actants encounter each other in interactions that materialize worlds in some forms rather than others. Haraway's, Haraway's objective, Haraway's purpose is to argue for a practice of situated knowledges in the worlds of techno science, situated knowledge. Knowledge that is why is context specific, science is context specific to technology is context specific that is what we have already discussed. Okay. Haraway's the objective of Haraway is to argue for a practice of situated knowledge uh, knowledges, context specific knowledges okay, in the worlds of techno science, worlds whose fibers infiltrate deep and wide throughout the tissues of the planet, including the flesh of our personal bodies. Okay. Then what we have discussed till now in this lecture? We started with uh, uh, how, uh, uh, oh, I mean what is the relationship between uh, gender and technology, okay? whether, gen, uh, technolo is, uh, whether technology is itself shaped by gender or uh, gender is shaped by technology, I mean feminist construal of technological systems. Then we discussed uh, the relationship between ethnicity and technology. I mean, uh, when we say uh, the relationship between gender and technology, when when um, Cockburn posed this question, is technology itself shaped by gender? She referred to industrial, commercial, and military technologies, which are masculine in a very historical and material sense. When Cockburn's uh, Cockburn posed the second question, is gender shaped by technology? In this sense technology is one of the formative processes of men, I mean uh, the, the appropriation of technology by men and the exclusion of women from many of the domains deemed technical are processes that leave their mark in the very design of tasks and of machines. In ethnicity and technology, we have discussed how technology has been shaped by ethnicity in that conventional valuations of skin colors have been the benchmark in the development of photographic and film technologies. Technology has helped constitute ethnicity in that conventional hierarchies of desirability have been reinforced by the re reproduction of white faces as pleasing flesh stones rather than unpleasantly beefy. There from there on we have come to a point of a cyborg or cybernetic organism as was envisaged by Donna J. Haraway. I mean the cyborg is a figure in both material and fantastic sense, both real and imaginary sense, which explore the implications for life in the context of techno science. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean uh, Haraway tried to, Haraway always used the term techno science because for her uh, and, and, and for STS scholars mostly uh, uh, science and technology are inseparable. Uh, that is why she did not use the term science and technology separately, uh, she used the term techno science. The, the liberatory potential of science and technology involves the greater power of science and technology to create new meanings, new entities and to make new worlds. This is a modernist perspective on um, new uh, meanings and uh, modernist perspective on new entities, new modern uh, and I mean new modernist perspectives on new worlds. While critical of many aspects of the way things happen such as the wholesale extending of private property to patenting life forms, Haraway warns against the purest rejection of the unnatural hybrid entities produced by biotechnology. Although uh, uh, she was very much opposed to uh, patenting of uh, animals, human genes and much 
plant genetic material. I mean, um, uh, for example, the, the, the introduction of a gene from flounders into tomatoes, which live in cold seas, which enables the tomato to produce a protein that slows freezing. From there on, Haraway uh, goes on to uh, uh, reflect on how often efforts to develop a politics of technology are seen as anti technology as an attempt to impose upon technology rigid negative political controls. The prevalence of that misconception is sometimes misunderstood as an attack on science and technology. Okay. Haraway is sharply critical of those who reject technology in favor of a return to a mythical natural state or theological stage or metaphysical stage. Rather, she argues instead for an embracing of the positive potential of science and technology. Haraway revels in the very difficulty of predicting what technology's effects will be. In this sense, she reflects on the lively, unfixed, and unfixing practices of science and technology pro that produces surprises, uh, uh, that uh, which produce, uh, I mean, the lively, unfixed, and unfixing practices of science and technology, which produce surprises, which just might be good ones. Okay, and and the and the purpose. I mean, Haraway's purpose is to argue for a practice of situated knowledges in the worlds of techno science, uh, worlds which fibers infiltrate deep and wide throughout the tissues of the planet, including the flesh of our personal bodies. Okay. In the next lecture, what we are going to do? We are going to discuss. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll we'll wind up. Uh, two components, uh, especially two components to establish further uh, uh, the social shaping of technology. One was the excerpts from Marx's writings, okay, the machine versus the worker and technology and capitalist control by Harry ba Braverman and then we will come to a gendered socio technical construction in the context of a smart house. Uh, uh, case the smart house uh, prototypes and what do designers have in mind when we go out with uh, construction when we go out with a design okay uh, housework out of sight out of mind women as a social group relevant women uh, or, or and, and and many other uh, uh, marginalized communities indigenous communities they are significant they are relevant social groups but they are mostly they are uh, neglected, removed while construing a particular technology. Uh, that is why we uh, will discuss how a smart house is a masculine construct, the decline of the one size fits all paradigm, a history of contraceptive technologies, the institutionalization of women as the other shift in focus from similarities to differences, the institutionalization of women as the other. Uh, and then we will discuss development of the first physiological means of contraception focused exclusively on women one size fits all and it is uh, uh, and the counter arguments to such uh, notion of one size fits all and how to whether we should modify technology to fit people or we should modify people to fit technology that is a uh, different thing before we go into uh, our discussion. You know, go on to discussing uh, or uh, uh, um, discussing on uh, discussing uh, the information society issues and illusions by David Lyon. Okay, thank you.